It's time for Nourishable, and I'm Dr. Lara. On October 14th, 2012, President Donald Trump tweeted, I've never seen a thin person drink Diet Coke. Let's take a look at the statistics to see if they support Donald Trump's observation. And while we're at it, we'll explore whether diet sodas are a healthy option for you. <laughs> Public health officials have been recommending to reduce the consumption of added sugars. By far, the biggest contributor of added sugars to the diet are from sugar-sweetened beverages, like soda and energy drinks. Enter diet soda. In the last decades, diet soda consumption has been increasing in the United States. On any given day, about 20% of Americans drink at least some diet soda. Currently, 33% of U.S. adults are considered healthy weight, 35% are considered overweight, and 31% are considered obese. Now, while President Trump may state that he's never seen a thin person drinking diet soda. Statistics show us that 11% of healthy weight adults drink at least one diet soda per day, which increases to 19% of overweight adults and 22% of obese adults. Are diet sodas healthy for you? It's complicated. Let's approach this question from a few different angles. First, does substituting sugar-sweetened beverages with diet sodas help people lose weight? Since diet sodas have been introduced in the US, obesity prevalence has continued to increase. But we can't assess causation from correlation, so let's take a look at the data a little bit more closely. In controlled intervention studies, human subjects are given either regular or diet soda, and then they go about their daily lives. Together, these studies show that the diet soda drinkers did not overcompensate by eating more food calories day to day, but this yielded only a modest or negligible weight loss over months. But there's a big caveat in trying to apply these results to the real world. The human subjects were blinded as to whether they were drinking regular or diet soda. But in the real world, you would definitely know. This is why I also wanted to look at some prospective cohort studies, where researchers identify a cohort of free-living people, assess their health status and what they eat, and then check back in with them every few years to look for changes in health. One study found the more diet soda consumed, the greater the weight gain seven years later. Another long-term study found that the people who lost the most weight drank more diet soda, but also that the people who gain the most weight also drink more diet soda. How can diet soda be associated with both weight loss and weight gain? It's confusing, but the take home message is that some people can effectively use diet soda as part of their weight loss strategy, but that it's no magic bullet. If sugar sweetened beverage consumption increases your risk of chronic diseases, does diet soda consumption eliminate that risk? Other large prospective cohort studies have found that diet soda consumption is associated with an increased risk of metabolic syndrome, a syndrome that is characterized by a cluster of risk factors, including high waist circumference, high blood pressure, and high blood glucose. However, there have also been other prospective cohort studies showing no association between diet soda consumption and risk of developing type 2 diabetes or coronary heart disease. Why are these associations so inconsistent? It's possible that artificial sweeteners in diet soda can impact our health in complex ways. Maybe it's because diet soda is frequently consumed along with sweet or salty snacks, or because regular diet soda drinkers develop a different gut microbiome, or because their brain processes sweet flavors differently. So how can we make sense of this information? My advice is to echo the joint 2012 statement by the American Heart Association and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They stated that substituting sugar-sweetened beverages with artificial sweeteners may help people reach and maintain a healthy weight as one step in the short term, as long as the substitution doesn't lead to additional calorie consumption through overcompensation. In the long term, it could be beneficial to opt for seltzer and unsweetened iced teas. Try rethinking your drink. Thanks for tuning into Nourishable. If you like what you're learning, give us a like and subscribe.